Legacy Packs, the only thing more useless than League of Legends Players 2 Society. So up until yesterday, not only had I reached the cap for amount of Legacy Packs you can possibly own, I had nearly 150 spare ones just sitting in my gift box. Why? Well, for those of you that don't know how bad this box is, let me give you a little bit of an example. So of the 3,000 cards within this pack, if you just search the term Quick Effect, you only get 76 results. Out of 3,000 cards, there are only 76 Quick Effects. Yeah, I hope you didn't want some kind of monster disruption because this box has none of it. This pack also contains such valuable ultra rares as Black Skull Dragon, Remove Brainwashing, and Yu Joe Friendship. All cards that are extremely meta relevant and have been dominating the game for years. I think you get the picture. So I decided that I was going to set myself a challenge. I was going to build a deck using only cards from these legacy packs. No other packs. No gems spent. No cards from any other packs. No sales. No structure decks. Nothing. Just these free to play legacy packs. And honestly, I was pretty surprised with the result. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I go through the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, as apparently only about 40% of the people watching this are even subscribed to the channel, yet nearly all of you are actually returning viewers who have seen my content before. So if you're an active viewer of the channel and want to see more content from me in the future, remember to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss an upload. Alright, let's get into the deck list. So the legacy packs may be completely awful, but there is one card in the packs that stands out way above all the others, as it's a card that there is actually some fairly good competitive decks completely built just around it, and it happens to be within these packs. And that is of course, number 4 Stealth Kraken. This is a card that only takes 2 level 4 monsters to make it, and this card by itself, you can build an entire deck around, and entire archetypes actually have been formed around this card in the past. This card, while it's face up on the field, all face up monsters on the field become water. So that's already a nice little floodgate style effect that affects any archetype that has to use its attributes to be able to summon its monsters. On top of that, once per turn during the main phase, quick effect, you can destroy one water monster your opponent controls. And keep in mind, you just turned all your opponent's monsters into water. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack it had on the field. If this exceeds someone card is destroyed, you can special summon Stealth Kraken spawns from your extra deck up to the number of materials this card had, then you can attach up to one water monster from your graveyard to each of those special summon monsters as material. So when this card dies, it has a really nice little float effect that brings out Stealth Kraken spawns, each with one material below them. Once per turn, during the main phase quick effect, you can destroy one water monster your opponent controls. Not particularly relevant at the start, because obviously with your Kraken off the field, this card isn't able to pop anything. But, if this card, special summoned by the effect of a number exceeds monster, is destroyed, you can special summon other stealth kraken monsters from your graveyard, up to the number of materials this card had, then attach one water monster from your graveyard to each of those special summon monsters' material. So basically, your opponent destroys the kraken, it spawns two little dudes. Then if your opponent destroys this dude, it will actually revive the kraken and get a material underneath it. Meaning, this card will then become active to be able to quick effect pop stuff because all monsters are now water again. So by destroying this card, it actually makes your board stronger a lot of the time. Now obviously to summon this card is actually quite easy, you just need two level 4 water monsters on the field. So to do that, we have a bunch of special summoner monsters, we have Silent Sea Needle, if you control a water monster you can just summon this guy. We have the Penguin Squire, which is a card where if you set a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand and reduce its level by 1 or 2. Then you can activate its effect to flip that monster face up. So just by setting a Nightmare Penguin or by setting a Barrier Statue of the Torrent, you can then just summon your Penguin, flip the card face up, and all of a sudden that's two level fours on the field to go into your Kraken. On top of that we of course have Unexpected Die as well, and a couple of Norm monsters, so it's another way to just get out two level fours on the field to easily summon your dude. The rest of the cards in this deck are all just supporting cards. We have a couple of cards that are really good for going second. We have the Santa Claus, which is one of my favourite cards. It's basically just a budget kaiju. This card you can spare someone from your hand in your opponent's field in defence position by tributing one monster they control. So exactly the same as a kaiju, only it summons in defence position. It's a little bit worse though, as if it does survive, during the end phase your opponent will get to draw a card, which is 
Obviously not the greatest, but because we have no other Kaijus, this is the best we got. On top of that, we have another card that's pretty good for going second, and that is Gendo the Ascetic Monk. Face up attack machine monsters in the field cannot activate their effects. This defense to the card cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So this card, obviously if your opponent has a nasty board of all negates, you can summon this, all of a sudden their negates are turned off. But I'm going to be honest, this deck is not very good going second. There's no Ash Blossoms, no Maxis, Imperms, Effect Veilers, Droplets, no good going second cards, so... If this deck does go second, you're probably going to lose most of the time. This deck's main strength is going to be going first, like a lot of the decks in Master Duel. Some of the other noteworthy monsters in this deck of course include your Barrier Statue of the Torrent, which is a card that makes it so neither player can special summon anything except water monsters, a very nasty floodgate. We have your Nightmare Penguin, which is a card that when flipped face up can target one card your opponent controls and return it to hand, which is very good in combination with your Penguin Squire, which can flip things face up. We're also running one copy of your Cyberstein, which is a card that everyone knows about, which is a very, very strong card. Basically, pay 5,000 life points, special summon a fusion monster from your extra deck. And there's quite a few fusion monsters in this pack that you can summon with this card. We of course have your The Last Warrior from Another Planet, which is a card is notorious for being comboed with Cyberstein. Because on summon, it destroys all monsters you control, and neither player can special summon monsters. So summoning this on turn 1 is a pretty nasty play that can sometimes just win you the game on its own. We also have Gatling Dragon, which is a card that can toss 3 coins, destroy a bunch of monsters. We have your Gear Fareed, which is a card that when targeted negates effects and destroys cards. We have your Giant Master of Oz, which just has 4200 attack and makes for a really nice beat stick. And last but not least, to complete the deck list, we of course have just a shit ton of fairly strong trap cards. I'm sure you've seen all these cards before, as they're all very commonly used. We have Ring of Destruction, which is a card that just targets one monster your opponent controls, destroys it and burns them for a bit of damage. We have your Needle Ceiling, which if there are four more monsters on the field, will just destroy all face-up monsters, which is very good in a deck where basically you're only going to be having one monster on the field, and when it's destroyed, it just summons some dudes. So this card, very bad for your opponent, but actually pretty good for you. On top of that, we have your compulsory evacuation device, target one card, turn it to hand. We have your bad aim, opponent activates an effect, you can target a card in the field and destroy it. And we have summon limit, which is a card that honestly, it can impact you fairly negatively, but you guys have all seen this card before, you know how powerful it is. Limiting your opponent to only two summons a turn can just win you the game by itself. This card is too strong not to include in the deck, as it's basically Probably one of the most powerful cards in the Legacy Packs, if not the most powerful. Alright guys, that's going to do it for the decklist portion of the video. The rest of the video will be gameplay showcasing the decklist in action with commentary. And without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so today I have three replays to show you guys. Now obviously all three of these replays were gathered during casual matches. That's because I was hoping for some more Mimia rogue level decks, some more fun decks, rather than playing against top tier Sword Soul and getting my ass pounded every single game. Because my deck, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's pretty shit in comparison to some of the more top tier decks in the game, obviously. So I want to have some more fun games, some more fair games, some stuff that I'm actually going to be able to win, rather than getting my ass pounded every game. So these are the deck lists I had, or the matches I had. Obviously these matches though are against some more high ranked players rather than the lower ranked. Every single one of these players was diamond to last season. I know the season just reset, but everyone's currently platinum in here, so... They were all diamond last season, you can even see the border. So although their decks may be me, me, at least the player level is still pretty good. Alright, let's get into the games. Also, all these replays are going first, as I did have some going second wins, but they're all very, very boring gameplays. It was just, I kaiju to think just one DP that you concede. Not exactly the most exciting replays to show off, so. Alright. So this was against Maya Kashi, I think. So activating my unexpected die to summon a normal monster from deck, bringing out my Gaga Geo. Special summoning the Silent Sea Needle, because there's a water monster on field. Going into my Stealth Kraken and passing the turn by setting two trap cards. Alright. Points to activate this dual dude, summon out a Mayakashi uh, Yuki, M Yuki Musume. Summoning this dude, then bring back the Tutor from Graveyard, which we're going to pop immediately so he doesn't do any Synchro Summoning. He then opts for a Link Monster instead, which we're going to return to hand because I don't know if this deck has any Link 3s that he was going to go into. I don't, I'm not super, you know, in touch with how Mayakashi plays. I've just seen it from Dual Links, so I know it wants to make a level 3 Tuna Monster, or level um, 3 Synchro Monster at the start. I don't know how their Link plays work. 
Can activate my stealth power and popping the monster. Probably shouldn't have done this because my opponent has a resurrect effect. I had nothing to pop it here. And it's not exactly like I'm in any rush to try to finish this duel quickly. <laughs> this deck is a very slow control style deck. Alright, opponent summons a whatever the hell this is. I'm going to pop it. I don't think I even read the effect, I'm going to be honest. Summons back a Yuki. I activate my summon limit. My opponent now has already done two special summons, so he can't do any for the rest of the turn. No synchro summoning for him, and he just concedes instantly. So yeah, that's basically what this deck does. It's a very slow style control deck that just aims to just outvalue your opponent by using this stealth kraken that doesn't actually detach materials to pop things. It can just pop one thing a turn, so it can get a lot of value out of it. That combined with a decent amount of trap cards, and you've probably got yourself a nice little control deck. Alright, so this time setting the Gargagio, special summoning the Penguin Squire, using the set monster, flipping it face up, two level fours, going into our Stealth Kraken. Setting my one trap card and passing, so obviously a fairly weak board right now, but it's alright. We'll get through it with only two disruptions. My opponent playing the recently unnerfed Altergeist cards. I'm going to be popping this card instantly. Not sure whether or not that's the best play to make here, I just decided to do it anyway. I think I was worried there was old Skies cards that special summon themselves with dudes on board. I actually forgot how this deck plays. I activate my Cyber Stein, he activates his Manifestation to then bring back a card. I activate his Altergeist um, negating dude, his protocol, and shuffling a card from hand into the deck to add another Altergeist to hand. All of these are actually very scary, especially the protocol. So he's going to bring back a dude, and this protocol is very terrifying. Summons out his Marionetta. Special summons this dude from hand, and in response to its summon, I'm going to try to pop cards on the field. Because currently, although he has a negate that could pop my Stealth Kraken if using its effect, he's kind of not obliged to do so, as it would mean that my... That's not the right word, but he's not obliga obligated... I haven't got the right word for this. Either way, he doesn't want to pop this as it would destroy it and bring back two dudes, so he's not particularly inclined to do so. I think that's a better word. But I want to do it right now because I want to make sure to get both his monsters off the field now, because if both monsters are off the field, he can't use the monster he's hoping to summon with this. Because he's hoping to summon a little monster that can target my stuff and return it to hand by using other altergeists on the field. So I want to get rid of both altergeists right now. In hindsight, he probably should have negated the stealth kraken. But he chooses not to, which is fine. He's also probably scared to activate Cyber Sign if he uses him a gate now. So sums out this dude instead. Negates my effect, but I'm gonna Kaiju his monster so my card can be used again. And my Cyber Stein can now summon out the Gear Freed. This card's actually such a cool boss monster. Not the strongest boss monster, obviously, being only stopping target effects, but it's still a really cool card. Shuffling to add his multi-faker back to hand. Summons this dude. Sets another trap card. Tries to use his effect to swap over. I'm going to be popping his monster so he can't. He then has to negate the effect, but this is the most pointless negate I've seen in my life. Negates the effect, but because he does that, he has to remove his own monster, so he doesn't get its effect. So he literally just gave me two monsters, and he did nothing. I take max C, which is we don't care about, we're just going to draw one anyway. we we'll just draw one. And from here, he just concedes, realising his mistake. Alright, on to game three. Alright, I think this was against probably the strongest deck of the ones we faced. This is, I think, Despia, I think. Well, actually a cool little game. Alright. Adds many unexpected die, summoning out my normal monster. I'm going to be using the Penguin because we want to save this card for later, as it's a very, very strong effect to just have on board. Summon limit and my compulsory evacuation device. I think most games where you get your Kraken out and you have Summon Limit, you have a very good chance of winning. These two cards are just probably the two strongest cards in all of the Legacy packs. They're very, very strong. Planet Sun's out his Querulus or Quel Quel Querulus, yes, I have no idea how to pronounce that. 
Gonna be popping it straight away, activating summon limit. My opponent then activates this in response. I have no idea why you would special summon here when he was trying to special summon his dude back from the graveyard. I was super thankful for this because it meant I didn't have to use my evacuation device on it. So, not sure why you'd ever activate this here. So I pop his monster, do a bit of burn damage, and he basically has to end his turn here because summon limit is too strong. Yeah, he's pretty doomed. <laughs> Summons his dude to hand, adds another dude to hand. Frightful patchwork, searching for a fusion, uh, polymerization, and one of his monsters. All of which he can't do anything with right now, so... And I'm suspecting most of this back row is all just bait stuff. Probably the fusion stuff he just added to hand, so I don't really care about it. I draw into Barrier Statue, which I opt for being the stronger of the, of the um, two Floodgates I have. Because this card actually locks my um, Stealth Kraken unless I put it in defense, so... Getting over his monster. Attacking him in the face. And now with all that stuff he just added to hand, he has to go through a Summon Limit, a Pop, and he's locked to Water Monsters, so... And we have a Compulsory Evacuation Device, so he just concedes instantly. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for today's replays. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Remember, if you did, to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch SpongeBob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.